very much. So Phil, you're our first candidate interview. Yep. So before we begin, we'd just like to say thank you very much for standing and putting yourself forward for election this year. It is great to have such a vibrant election with so many candidates putting themselves forward. So it's much appreciated for your time. Um, we're going to start by going through some of some uh, very straightforward questions. Obviously, you are Phil Moody. Would you like to tell everyone what is your occupation? My occupation at the moment is a, fund, a community fundraising officer for an autism charity. And whereabouts is that based, Kyle? Uh, based in, well, in between Portsmouth and Southampton. Very good. Um, you are a Wimbledon reporter, yep. <laughs> despite your distance there. Um, what was your first Wimbledon game? First Wimbledon game was, I think it was the 99-2000 season. Um, okay. I remember beating Watford 5-0 at 7. <laughs> Happy days. Um, yes, I remember it well. So it was a good game to go to, sort of pulled me in straight away. Um, but that's, yeah, that's the first game I remember going to. What a legendary game to pick. Um, and in your time, in your now 20 years of sports, who's been your favourite all-time player? Oh, favourite all-time player? That's a massive question. Um, there's a few options in there. I don't think for always his ability, because uh, he was a, a good player and he did a lot for the club, but I was always a big fan and still a big fan of um, the Beast. Just mm. him as an individual, um, seeing him on social media still now, things like that. So I think, yeah, probably my favourite. Uh, larger than life character definitely uh, right Phil read through your manifesto as we get down to business uh, read through your manifesto is it fair to say that your main motivation for being on Don's Trust board is to better engage with our younger fans is that a I think a, to a certain degree I think overall personally I think it's engaged with all fans but I think bringing in a younger element as well um, for me like I'm, I'm 33 now and I think I decided to stand now, but I, I wouldn't have stood a few years ago because I, I think I would have felt a bit overwhelmed potentially. And I think it's trying to get opinions of, across of individuals that are younger that are going to be fingers crossed supporting this club for, for many years to come. But I think the engagement will still be with the whole variation of fans. You do mention, the reason I say that is because you mentioned in your manifesto work you've done with with young people in, in yeah. schools and in, in teaching and in coaching and things like that. So just give a little bit more background to that exactly how things such as your your coaching and your work with uh, young people what form that has taken yeah so most of my working career has been based around community projects um so a lot of football community projects um but other sporting community projects as well so it's been based around opportunities for everyone um no matter what age but a lot of it, as you said has been children so I've been coaching in schools, teaching in schools, um, delivering education courses to post-16 students, as well as then running courses and external sessions for individuals. So it's understanding what the young people want, how they want it, and then how we can support with that at the same time. I mean, currently we, we do have the junior dons that work with our, our younger fans, our under-16s. Um, they do great work already. What do you think you'd be able to, to add to this? Or what would you like to see be done differently in that regard that we're not already doing i think it's, again it's just reaching out to further individuals i think there's potentially a little bit of a gap between the under 16s and then maybe sort of your 26 to 30 and above range i think like a 16 to 24 range i think we can really sort of tap into university students college students that have got some knowledge about some of the ideas we want to try and progress with and try and sort of further the club but potentially don't maybe feel their voice can be heard at the right time or the right level and how about how do you go about hearing those opinions and hearing those voices? What I practical think it's steps does that involve? I think it's trying to get out there and understand what members are in the Don's Trust, so what ages we're, work, we're working with and who's involved. Then speaking to local people in the area. So again, local universities near, near to Plough Lane around London. Is there a fan base already there that maybe don't engage as much as we hope to? Um, speaking to, like I said, other colleges and things like that to try and engage with individuals that maybe are a AFC Wimbledon fan, but maybe don't massively know about the Don's Trust or have the right knowledge in certain things and want to try and give a view across. And you say about their knowledge of, of the Don's Trust. What is what is the Don's Trust to you? And what message do you want to get across to those younger people? Don's Trust to me is basically, well, I say, I say a, a family, a, a community. Um, we're all fans of the same thing. We all want the 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 pathway for progression for the club, even if it's maintaining or progressing, it's we've come to a great place um, to try and push that forward as well. But it's an opportunity to have an ownership of something, 
as well as supporting others at the same time. So get, having the opportunity to give your opinion across, as well as listening to others about the same uh, elements and points around the club. And just finally, when we're talking about the young supporters in your in your manifesto, I think you mentioned a, a youth board. Yeah. What's your vision here? What does that look like when you say that? It's sort of looking sort of six to eight individuals, potentially. I don't think it'd be meeting as often as the Don's Trust Board would be. Uh, it might be maybe four, four times a year. So linking it to maybe school terms. We had one, at, one each school term. This could be ideas they can bring across, thoughts they've had maybe interactions they've had with other people, things they think the club can potentially do. And then this can be brought onto the John's Trust Board if I was elected for myself um, and pass this information across rather than 25 emails a day with ideas coming in. It's a group of individuals getting ideas from others, bringing it to their group. They're passing it on to another individual who's on the board to try and implement these ideas if possible. Also in your manifesto, you put forward your experience in football administration in football business, fundraising, as you mentioned, as your current yeah. role. Um, do, you, do you foresee all of these skills being applicable to your time on the board, should you be elected? Or do you favour a more targeted approach with specific roles allocated to specific members of the board? I think a, a bit of both, really. Personally, I think that an individual's remit of skills, no matter how small or large, can sort of support the whole board and all the Donstrad members. But I think potentially is something that we need to look to go towards is having certain roles for certain individuals that link to their main skill sets. I'm sure there's everyone on the elections that's got lots of ideas, lots of skill sets, but they probably have a niche that really their strengths um, more than some of the other skills, although they're still good elements to, the, to their sort of, to their bow. So I think it's a good thing to have that you can support others, help others, give ideas because you've got experience in other ideas. But I think having a certain individual role for someone that links to their main skills will be really beneficial. I mean, one of the one of the specific roles, of course, is that of the chair, the chair of the Don's Trust Board. Uh, what skills do you think are important in making a good chair? I think you have to be a great communicator to start with. So you have to be able to put your ideas across, your thoughts, but at the same time is listening to the other thoughts and opinions of everyone else on the board and potentially the other Don's Trust members because it's all about all the owners of the club, not just one or not just eight. It's about everyone being involved and having the chance to put that opinion across. So the different forms of communication are key. I think you need to be quite strong-minded. Um, so someone that can lead a meeting, lead a, a forum, those sort of things. You need to be able to sort of stand up the front and show that you sort of run the room in certain aspects that people are listening to what you say. At the same time, again, being quite approachable to questions from other individuals. And that's it, just being an open person, being honest. Um, if something does go wrong, hands up, honesty, this is what's gone wrong, this is how we need to change it, how can you help us? So I think trying to hide things if you, if you were as a chair wouldn't be the best way to go because as we know in the current world, if, something, if you do something wrong, you'll get found out eventually. So it's just being honest from the off and understanding what mistakes have been made. Is it a role that you feel that you'd put yourself forward for? I think potentially. I think why not see see what the involvement is, how we could do it. I think I, I have skills that could, to, could go towards that. But then again, at the same time, I don't know everyone on the board as an individual. So there could be better candidates than me. And I think the main thing is, especially if the chair is, is the best candidate, uh, as long as they're willing to do it. Okay, great. Um, elsewhere in your manifesto, you referenced match day experience. Yep. And communication. So two separate things here. Maybe we'll start with match day experience. What, in your opinion, needs addressing here? I think the slightly the interaction around the stadium as well. I know that the Donald Trust have their kiosk, um, but it potentially could have more people around the stadium, more opportunities to ask questions, that sort of thing. Um, even little things like I said about the junior Dons. I know we have the mascot experience, um, but at a previous club, what we did to try and give as many young people the opportunity Rather than having one or two mascots, we had 11. Um, so it literally was one per player, um, which then you're working, engaging with more young people on a constant basis rather than a small number over, over the whole season. Um, I think just, like I said, just people being around and understanding people's questions, having a chance to speak to people uh, a bit more if possible um, and the sort of those sort of key things. 
And that's, I, I get what you're saying there, sort of communication with Don's Trust board members on a match day and mascots as well. Is there wider elements that you're thinking we need to go in in terms of what most people would consider match day experience as being things like um, pre-match halftime entertainment, catering, facilities, things like that? Is that something that you think you have a role to play in or is that more of a, a club day-to-day um, task? I think it'd be something I could support in. I think the Donald Trust Board can support in that as well. There's things that I've learned from the other clubs that I've worked at, uh, especially the most recent clubs. So it's more of a community element. So you could have your involvement, you can understand, you could put opinions across about what should be done. I think the things like the catering and things at the moment would be, be good to understand what the Donald Trust Board have already potentially put in place or have an understanding of for the new stadium uh, before we sort of really say, oh, we need to do this, this and this. So I think it'd be good to get their knowledge on it already. Um, Halftime entertainment, I think it'd be something. Um, I know we had a survey asking about what would we like to see at halftime, things like cheerleaders, penalty competitions. I think there's an interest there. Um, again, one thing I saw years ago was kicking the, you buy a ticket, kicking from the halfway line. If you score at both ends, you win a certain amount of money. So it's something that people can get involved in by a potential income stream for the club and the aspect you have to buy a ticket. Um, but at the same time, you've got an involvement at halftime as well. Just to pick up again, just to go back to the communicating with board members on match days. Do you foresee, do you see the role with fans and interacting, being available to speak to fans? It's, it's more reactive. I think what I'm trying to say is fans tend to be more reactive, don't they? If things are not quite as they'd like them to be, or if they're unsure of something, they'll come and speak to people then. Whereas perhaps they're not as, and we're all guilty of this, not as proactive in coming up with ideas or looking at things that are, are absent. Um, do you think we are in that position better to be more reactive than proactive? I think potentially, I think if there's times when we have ideas coming up, we can try and be proactive and get that there a little bit earlier. But I think, as you said, communication from individuals is reactive because if something's gone wrong, I think a lot of it can be negative reactive sometimes. And the fact that something's happened, you don't quite agree with, you then want to bring that point up rather than going up to someone saying, oh, but I thought that meeting was really good last week. So it's not always positivity reaction. So if we can try and be sort of preactive in certain aspects, we know what's happening in the future. We know it's, it's going to come out. Can we be there to sort of explain to people, showcase? But yeah, I think a lot of it is potentially reaction. And like I said, it's potentially negative reaction. So it's just being aware of what things have happened and what, what's taking place. Right. So uh, recently uh, we accepted, the club accepted a minority shareholder investment. Yep. Into Don's Trust now owns just under 75% of AFCW PLC, although we still maintain majority, 83% of voting rights in the club. Was this the right decision for you? And um, how would you handle a scenario in future in which that percentage could potentially be up for being further reduced? Regarding the right decision, I can see the positives and negatives. I think whichever way that decision had gone, um, there would have been for and against. Personally, I'm still unsure. I don't want to say yes or no, because I still think some days I think I can see why it's been done. And there's some days I think, I don't know what, may, may, maybe not. So I think I'm, I know as an election and an interview, you probably want to give a firm answer, but I'm massively sitting on the fence here. Um, I think relating to a further scenario, um, my thought process would be not to have any lower percentage of shares as the Don's Trust, I think. We've got where we are because of the fan ownership. We've got where we are because of the involvement of the fans. And I think we need to maintain that as much as possible. Um, we've shown recently that if needed, we can source funds, we can source finances, we can bring things in, we can do other aspects to help our club. So I think overall, my firm belief is to not reduce that in, in any way. Um, there's no, there's never any problem sitting on the fence, by the way. <laughs> and it's not to bear you out there, but I think sometimes decisions... Uh, they're not always black and white. Things need to have a bit of nuance and more thought given since that's absolutely fine. Um, final question from me before we get on to some of the questions that have come in from those attending. Um, very simple one. Phil, you're drinking a cup of tea now, I assume. Is it a yes. cup of tea you got there? Yes. When you made that cup of tea, did you put the... Oh, it was very nice. Wimbledon. Available in the club shop? Or isn't that, it's not a club shop one, is it? No, I, this was bought as my leaving present for my last job. Oh, very um, nice. From a, I, don't the, I don't know the company, but I'm taking it as a present. <laughs> very nice um when you made that cup of tea did you put the bag in the mug first or did the milk go in before the it's bag? always the bag in first the milk goes in later how 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 much later 
Yeah, I go with the tea bag, the water, then the milk. Perfect. 100% correct. Good. Excellent. Thank you very much, Phil. Um, I'm now going to hand over, I think, to George, yep. who is tr who's loitering under the name of the Don's Trust, as if he himself is the entirety <laughs> of the Don's Trust, which is bigging up your role somewhat, George. But yes, do we have questions that have come in from those attending. Yeah, we do. The first question for Phil. Um, Hazel Potter wants to know, are you able to disclose which football clubs you've worked with in the past? Of course, they might not want me to, but I don't mind. So um, the first football club I worked for was Chelsea Football Club, so the foundation department at Chelsea. And the second football club I worked for, as I said, more of a community club, was Portsmouth Football Club, so the community department. Okay. Um, Dominic Tima wants to know, what, were your, what was your reaction and your thoughts last year when you heard that we might be losing our fan ownership model? Not a big fan. W wasn't, wasn't keen whatsoever. I, I don't think, as I said earlier... We're, we're brought, brought up with the fact that it's our club, we're the owners, so I'd like to maintain the fan ownership model as much as possible. Okay. Lawrence Lown wants to know, off the back of the success of DLAG, should the Don's Trust be doing more to help local supporters who might be falling on hard times, maybe even giving them reduced tickets to matches? I think if possible. Again, as we said, it's a, it's a community club. We want to try and give us opportunities as, as much as possible. Um, I think that would also then support sort of filling the stadium as much if there wasn't the full capacity, can we get extra people in, give them a chance to see the club, which then engages a further fan base at the same time. Okay. Um, someone wants to know, what do you think the Don's Trust does well at the current time? Well, at the current time, they maintain they maintain the running of the club. They, they support in what we do. They, they try and take our opinions on board. They try and develop us as much as possible. As I said, I think they could be further engagement with the fans. But I think they, they, they are trying their best and I think they're, they're doing good things for the club. Yeah, um, another question. What do you think the role of the Don's Trust Board is in relation to its members and the football club? In relation to the members, it's constant communication in the aspect of keeping them involved. I think, as I said, I love my football and I always like to be involved as much as possible. And I think at times you can be involved, at times you're not involved. I think it's trying to maintain that communication and involvement as much as you can. In relation to the football club, I support them in the day-to-day -day running. So any things they need from us as an ownership is supporting that and giving, giving feedback and putting things in place that's required. Okay, and final question. Um, at the moment, the, restricted act, the, the margin for a restricted action at the club to pass is 75% of the members' vote. Yep. Um, would you be in favour of increasing it or reducing it or keeping it the same? I think personally, I'd keep it the same. I think 75% is... Majority, and it's a good majority. I think if you lower any amount, you could, and you state just a majority vote, then you could be putting things potentially in danger in certain elements. And the fact that you had one person over, then something could be changed. I think 75% is a good amount. And one final question uh, What will you personally do to work well with existing Don's Trust board members? Firstly, listening to their, their thoughts, what things they've, they've learned from their, their two years, their four years, however long they've been in place. I think learning from experiences from them is key because, again, not being on the board myself already, there'll be some learning curves involved, um, but then also having the ability to put my opinions across and making them understand what my thoughts are and what I've seen from the outside over the last few years. Thank you. That's all of the live questions we've had. Thank you, George. Um, thank you, George. Um, just interesting one, just on Lawrence's question about the Don's Local Action Group and, and potentially reduced ticket prices or things like that. I guess... That's a really difficult one to balance, isn't it? Because you have to, I suppose, work very closely with the the club there on one, is it an idea that we'd like to go forward? But two, is it one that practically is one that we, we can make work? Does that make sense? I, I think going from experience again in my previous role, I think tickets at reduced rates can work. We need to make sure financially it works for the club because you can't mm. be just giving tickets away at the same time. But I think going to a new stadium we can potentially utilise that and the fact that we've now got a bigger capacity. Well, hopefully we have in a few months when people can actually get in. But having the bigger capacity, if we're not selling out our capacity every week, can we then utilise and engage a further fan base at the same time? But then, like I said, it needs to be financially sound for us to manage that. Perfect. Great. Uh, Phil, thank you very much.